I'm trying to find other things to talk about, and due to the nature of what I cover, it's usually science-related stuff. I pull from YouTube a lot, so my feed has become a pretty haphazard mix of things that I like and stuff that's just straight up woo, but one thing I came across was from Little Light Studios. These guys showed pretty clearly that they do not understand storytelling, narrative structure, creative license, and they evidently don't even bother to research or watch what they critique at all. Most all media, from anime to video games and pretty much anything in between, is viewed as satanic by them. Like 1980s level satanic panic. I was looking for one show in particular to see what they had to say about it though. Lucifer. Let's check this out because clearly they didn't watch it. Wow. Lucifer. I wonder what this four. show's about. <laughs> All right, so brief synopsis on this. I'm just going to read it briefly, okay? Bored and unhappy as the Lord of Hell, Lucifer Morningstar, abandoned his throne and retired to Los Angeles, right? The Ooh. city of angels, uh -huh. uh, where he teams up with the LAPD, in particular a, a detective named Chloe Decker, uh, to take down criminals. Yes, as a brief synopsis, that is the premise of the show, but as we all know, plot synopsis by its very nature doesn't give you the whole story by definition, and we will see how that causes them to miss rather broad parts of the actual plot throughout the series, and by that I mean the entire plot. I should also take this opportunity to let you know that there will be spoilers if you haven't seen the show. I'll only be talking about what they cover, so up to about season three, I think. I'm actually hoping they do a follow-up for the more recent seasons, so I can see them ship bricks, but no luck so far on that. And uh, as part of this, he he has a nightclub that he owns. It's called Lux. It's kind of like a high-end, you know, nightclub. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so there's lots of the things you just described. There's lots of alcohol. There's lots of, uh, you know, lots of sex going on and, and just pretty much complete debauchery. So uh, he's a good guy. <clears throat> Yeah, we'll talk about that. You know, how, oh. how the spin on this show, like his character, yeah, he's, wow. he is portrayed very much as a, a good guy. So you have a lot of sympathy for the devil. Yes, we will talk about that. For now, I need to point out that owning Lux and all the debauchery he talked about is a very necessary part of understanding Lucifer as a character. For context, let's take a look at how he is introduced in the pilot. You know why I pulled you over? Well, obviously you felt the need to exercise your limited powers and punish me for ignoring the speed limit. It's okay, I understand. <laughs> so I, I like to punish people too. Or at least I used to. License or registration? <sighs> Coming right up. Are you trying to bribe me, sir? Yes, of course. Is that not enough? I don't want to take more, it's any money. It's against the law, sir. <laughs> you people are funny about your laws, aren't you? You break the laws sometimes, don't you? Sometimes. Put my siren on and drive really fast for no reason at all. Just because I can. Right? Why wouldn't you? It's fun. It feels good to get away with something, doesn't it? Yeah. It's okay, officer. People like to tell me things. Those deep, dark, naughty little desires that are on their mind. It's a gift. There must be something about this face. You're tempted to keep that, aren't you? Well, what are you waiting for? Permission? Go well, take it. Buy yourself something pretty. You deserve it. But if you don't mind, I really must be on my way. Oh, yeah, of course. Hey, have a nice evening. <laughs> you too, officer. You too. From his initial appearance, we are immediately shown that this is the modern gentleman devil, a well-dressed, well-mannered individual who has the means to live a very lavish lifestyle and wants for nothing, as becomes apparent when he begins pulling out money to try to bribe the officer. We also see a demonstration of one of his powers, his ability to draw out whatever a person desires. People want to tell him their secrets. The audience is shown another part of his personality by his manner when the cop walks back to his bike after eventually accepting the bribe that he appears disappointed in the officer. 
and that it was so easily dealt with and that he didn't go through with the ticketing at the very least and not charging him with bribery as well. Something backed up later in the episode when he asked Detective Chloe Decker if her corrupt little organization will be making the murder of an acquaintance of his a priority. This shows the character is not only a hedonist, but also has a strong sense of justice, something Little Light Studios missed completely, since in the Jewish tradition, the character we know as Satan is the accuser, essentially God's district attorney and lead prosecutor, while the dead person has to argue against him in his own defense. Something I like that they included to an extent in the show. So this was put on by Fox. They ran it for three seasons, okay? Mm. What do you think happened after three seasons? It got canned. Why do you think it got canned? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I remember hearing about it getting canned, and I and actually remember reading that there was a lot of people that were upset at that, which is kind of like disturbing that our society is, is, is seriously fascinated by, you know, the arch enemy of God. Yeah, so there was a watchdog group called One Million Moms, and they actually did a petition to have the show removed from wow. network television, you know, citing wow. all the things that were in it. But that's not actually the reason that it got canned. Ratings? Uh, n well, you wouldn't think so because of this next thing that I'm going to show you. Fox did indeed cite that the cancellation was a ratings-based decision, but you also need to bear in mind that unless you are The Simpsons, it is notoriously difficult to survive on Fox, apparently. The Million Moms may have started a petition to cancel the show, but the fan base, consisting of believers, atheists, and others, decided to find loose for a new platform. And I was keeping track of that whole ordeal, too. The show goes for three seasons. After three seasons, this starts trending on Twitter. Number one, what does it say? Save, Save Lucifer. Lucifer. Wow. So by the next day, a million tweets wow. for Save Lucifer. That's the power of a fan base. I figured Netflix would pick it up, personally. The only reason I included this bit is because they were amazed that people wanted to see more of Lucifer. Apparently, that's a bad thing to them. If you don't like it, that's fine. But you don't get to talk about your problems with the show if you haven't seen the show. When they started airing it on their network, this is the poster that they released. Are you kidding me? And I mean, if you I, zoom I mean, in there... Of course, it he, says, is risen, he is which risen. Is, which is literally so blasphemous. But I, I just think it's interesting that we're at a, a state where people's mindset is, we're saying save Lucifer. But here's the thing, just like Thanos really being a description of God, I mean, they've been putting this idea out there constantly mm -hmm. that God is evil and the devil is good. And this is obviously, um, you know, down the road. They're able to give this to society, and society is like accepting of this mentality. It's blasphemous to you, but to me it's both recognizing the fan base that supported the story you still haven't touched on yet, and by their support allowed it to continue. And a bit of foreshadowing with the wings, a plot point that comes up in that season. They keep going on about the tagline of it's good to be bad from another poster and all that for a bit longer. Way too long in my opinion talking about how it's some kind of conspiracy that Hollywood uses to that phrase to prime kids and all. So I'm skipping that bit because it isn't really pertinent. No appreciation for the story. And yeah, I plan on covering that whole thing they did about Marvel another time. It's some ridiculous stupidity. This next bit is from their own video and lays out pretty clearly what the point of the series is. What we've been exploring from the beginning is, is, is that there's, there's dark and light in everybody. And everybody can also be redeemed. Everybody can be for forgiven. And if you can forgive the worst person in the world, then that's divine. Isn't that what God and religion is about? I actually think, ironically, we are one of the more Christian shows out there. Because we're a story about redemption. And that is what Christianity is supposed to be about, at least in, in my experience of it. It's supposed to be about, you know, doing good deeds, about trying to be the best version of yourself. And ironically, that's, I think, one of the things that our show affirms week after week. And it's one of the things I like about it is a show about the devil might say more about the positives of Christianity and those ideas than others. Faith. And faith. Yeah, I think that's the attraction of it. It kind of questions everybody's belief in whatever. Yeah, by by turning it upside down, you're still looking at the same thing, but hopefully from a fresh perspective. you got to be open-minded, for sure. There it is, right? So those were a couple of the producers of the show. They laid out that it is overall a redemption story, which is what resonates with Christians. I mean, if you can make a story that redeems the devil, the baddest bad in Christianity, then the average Christian will understand that, optimally, 
No one is beyond redemption and forgiveness. Like the man said, that is the target message, and one many can get behind, as I have seen in the comments on this video, not that, well, your video, from Christians who are criticizing them for their misunderstanding or outright misrepresentation of the story. So, what did they take from it? Like, if God doesn't redeem the devil, God's going to be evil. Yeah. Yeah. See what I mean? Completely missing the point. They're getting hung up on the idea that it is a redemption story centered on the devil and not the underlying message that the producers just laid out. That's not the point at all that the producers were trying to make, and at no point did they bring up God as part of that. The battle between light and dark is a literary device, common if not completely part of any redemption story. Every character from Darth Vader in Star Wars to Bakugo in My Hero Academia has this inner conflict between bad tendencies and good ones, and it allows us to track their progression. So one of the things I picked out of here was the, the uh, you know, there's, there's darkness and light in everybody, mm. as if that's the way it's supposed to be, you know. And I want to challenge that thought with Scripture, because I don't think everybody should be included in that, and certainly not God. So this mixture of light and dark is really something that we see from Eastern mysticism yeah. and things like that. You know, it's the same kind of stuff we see in Star Wars. It's the same kind of thing we see in the martial arts. It's the same kind of thing you see in um, all kinds of stuff, you know, but typically other religions, not Christianity. The mixing of light and dark does not belong in Christianity mm -hmm. at all. And God was very patient with, with Lucifer in heaven. Oh. I mean, there was a massive amount of pleading with him, please don't go down this road. And so, you know, it, the devil caused a lot of this. He's the foundation of all this. What is your biblical source for that? Because I'm pretty sure that ain't in the Bible, bud. I cut off the next bit of them talking about how if you have this one quality where you help people, the rest is overlooked, referring to Lucifer's hedonist lifestyle, which changes like with him not joining in orgy when the opportunity presents itself because of the influence of Chloe and the effect that it's having on him. Though he does smoke evidence at a crime scene at one point. Baby steps, right? All right. I want to show you a couple of things from the show before we really start to dig into one particular episode. Finally, let's see what you've got after almost 15 minutes of you complaining about the premise of the show. Okay, these are just like little brief snippets we're gonna go through, just to give you an idea of what kind of flavor it puts out there as far as Christianity is concerned. I'm glad you came back. Well, I needed to get my parking validated. So your items were never recovered? No. Earlier you said that the items weren't that important. Yet now you seem very upset that they're gone. Well, I'm a walking paradox, what can I say? Sometimes we need to lose something before we can understand its value. I didn't lose anything. No, no, you were the victim of a crime. It's only natural that you would feel violated. And often our feelings of loss connect to how we feel about who we are. Oh, right, so we're back on that, are we? You want to talk about my identity? Well, yes, because you're the devil. You told me your names, but you left out a few others. Abaddon, Balliol, Prince of Darkness. Someone's been brushing up on their Sunday school. Yes, but before you fell, you were known as Semael, the Lightbringer. I don't go by that name anymore. That was a name that connotated your father's love for you. <laughs> right. Was casting his son into hell also an expression of his love? No, God didn't cast you out of heaven because he was angry with you. How can you presume to know God's intentions? No, I don't. I can't. Then maybe stick within the limits of your intellectual capacity. Or maybe my simplicity offers me a different perspective. God cast you out because he needed you to do the most difficult of jobs. It was a gift. Gift? He shunned me. He vilified me. He made me a torturer. Can you even begin to fathom what it was like? Eons spent providing a place for dead mortals to punish themselves. I mean, why do they blame me for all their little failings, as if I'd spent my days sitting on their shoulder, forcing them to commit acts they'd otherwise find repulsive? Oh, the devil made me do it! I have never made any one of them do anything! Never! What happened to you is unfair. Unfair? This is unjust. For all eternity, my name will be invoked to represent all their depravity. That is the gift that my father gave me. It was an act of love. How do you know? Because you are his favorite son, Samael. Do not call me that, please. You are his fallen angel. But here's the thing, when angels fall, they also 
rise. All you have to do is embrace all that you are. I can't. Yes, you can. You just have to be open to the process. You don't understand. I can't. But why? Because I stole them from me, you... The therapist he is talking to, Linda, doesn't take him seriously when he says he is the devil and treats him as just another client under the assumption that he is human and works within the context of what she perceives as a character. She sees his ruling of hell as a necessary function and one that could only be entrusted to Lucifer, again drawing from Jewish mythology to show him as essentially a warden of a prison. As for when he says that they were stolen from him, Lucifer had Maze, a demon he left hell with, cut off his wings when he came to L.A. and had them secured in what he thought would be a safe place. However, they were found and stolen, which is why he is upset. The wings still hold divine power, and he needs to recover them before they fall into the wrong hands or into the public purview. Proof of the divine is something that the angels, Lucifer included, are bound to keep from popping up, according to what we hear from a meta deal later on, since people are expected to have faith in the divine and not proof. So what did the people from Little Light Studios take from that? So you just seen a session that he had with his therapist, and uh, in there a lot, of, a lot of things came out, a lot of things about him and how he views his relationship between God and how she views it and they're mixing a lot of you know truth and error mm -hmm. one of the things that came out was a name samael and so i thought hmm that's kind of curious because she called it like the light bearer and i was like what yeah, never what is that, that name i've never heard that name before mm -hmm. where does that come from and so as i was digging i found out it's a hebrew name and so here's what it actually means it means venom of god poison of god or blindness of god Ooh, wow. it does not mean what they were making it to mean. They're wow. kind of mixing the Hebrew name with the Greek meaning mm -hmm. of uh, Lucifer, Sorry. right? Setting aside their issue with artistic license and interpretation, I want to point out that he did look into the Jewish roots of the name Semael. I don't know where he found his interpretation, but what I found is in line with what I mentioned earlier about the devil being a prosecutor for God in Talmudic tradition. So despite what he said, it seems they did use the proper name, and it isn't at all what he says it is. Not really surprising at this point. There, there, there's a lot there, though, that I think we need to bring out that yeah. is just disturbing in and of itself. Basically, making the claim that um, God was the one that forced him out. Mm -hmm. He did nothing to get mm -hmm. caused that. Mm -hmm. Yet, he's the one that caused all that dissension in heaven. Again, what is your source for that? The guy sitting right next to you cited scripture in a bit I cut out, but none of you have put forward one single citation about this, and to my knowledge, it can be found nowhere in the Bible where Lucifer was explicitly cast down from heaven. Yeah. So, yeah, he was saying, like, people do all their things on their own. They, they blame the devil, but they do it on their own. Yeah. There's, like, what you're saying, like, a little bit of truth, There's to, truth that, to that. truth to that. But who was the one that said, did God say... He doesn't elaborate on that, but it wasn't the devil according to the Bible. It was a talking snake. We know this because when Job got his world turned upside down over a bet God made with Satan, which takes place after the Garden of Eden story, Satan is walking around and talking to God like they were still cool. The serpent was cursed to have no legs, so how can they be the same being? Someone hasn't read their Bible. On that, let's skip ahead a little bit to another point they talk about. And I see that mindset in non-believers today. You see, the, they're always saying, if God was good, why is all this bad stuff happening? Why isn't God killing the murderers, killing the rapists? Well, he did that back when he flooded the world. And then you say, why would God, you know, the same breath, they say, why would a loving God destroy all those men, women, children, animals? Yeah. You can't yeah. win. God can't win with this. In, in the Bible, it says that, he told Noah to preach for 120 years. They had time to get on that ark, and they didn't. And eight people out of the world got on. Setting aside that the flood never happened, let's talk about the thought process people like me have gone through. So according to them, God already took care of the evil people in a flood that surely claimed innocent lives, young children in particular. God could have 
Thanos to them out of existence, but he chose a flood to drown everything, including animals that had done nothing wrong according to the story. Remember that everything that went wrong was the fault of man. So he genocided everyone and everything in an apparent ineffectual flood since it still didn't solve the problem. Now in modern day, we still see the same immoral behavior, a lot of it from believers and from the clergy. So why doesn't he strike down people now? Did he blow his magical load on the flood knowing it wouldn't change anything? The point is, why doesn't he curtail the kind of behavior that caused him to pull a reset on the world in the flood myth? How do they portray God? And there's a particular episode, it's in season two, that they encounter this character. Now, is it really God? No, it's not really God. Time to get back to the story in Lucifer. By the way, they skip over the entire first season and all the character growth Lucifer had from becoming less of a party animal and more of a person that fights for good and oftentimes putting himself in harm's way to help and save Chloe. And Lucifer encounters this man. <clears throat> There's a lot of things he can't figure out about him. So part of his character abilities is, you know, he can um, influence people to tell the truth, which is, I find kind of ironic that, because, well, you know, <laughs> the Bible tells us that he's the father of yeah, lies. lies, right? Well, that does track with what we already know the story producers are pulling from, which is the Talmudic tradition of Satan being a prosecutor. Also, something they don't cover is that God Johnson is not the only one his powers don't affect. Part of the reason Lucifer starts working with Chloe is because she is completely immune to his influence and his powers of persuasion have literally no effect on her, which is a mystery he wants to solve solely because it has never happened before and he wants to know why. It should also be noted at this point, it is established that he becomes mortal when she is nearby after the pilot episode. He has been injured from a gunshot while trying to showcase his immortality, and he was able to cut himself with a normal knife in her presence to confirm that she was the cause of that vulnerability. The effect seems to vary in distance throughout the series, but on average, if she is within about 100 feet or so, he's mortal. Well, hello, God. Hello, my son. Right, yes, I suppose that would be the standard way to greet your children. Nice touch. What can I do for you? Well, it's what I can do for you that's exciting. See, I can reveal the truth about the supreme being you've chosen to impersonate. Now, I bet you wanted to be God because he's benevolent, all-powerful, yada yada, but in actual fact, he's a Look, you won't be angry with me. You just go right on ahead. I can be anything you need me to be. Right, enough of this idle chit-chat. Time to tell me what this charade's really about. What do you desire? Hmm? To avoid a vengeful ex-wife? Years of back taxes? What's your game? It's a staring contest. You know, I'm pretty good at those. How's this possible? Oh, right, yes, I bet you're on some really amazing drugs, aren't you? If so, Chazzy. You're not supposed to be in here. Oh, never mind. Done with this fraud anyway. It's real good seeing you, Samuel. What did you say? For me, the question of is this a staring contest was a solid show that the person in question is not God, but he did recognize Lucifer, which means somehow he does have some of God's knowledge. How did they take it? I can tell you it isn't as a mystery of how this apparently random dude is some of God's knowledge. Okay, so here's his first encounter with this God Johnson character. My ears hurt. Yeah. <sighs> but, uh, pretty blasphemous, you know, what he says about God. Yeah. Um, Calls him a name that we cannot even say and mm. repeat, right? Yeah. And then basically is literally like, I mean, this is this terrible portrayal. How can this guy say honestly that that there's a good message at the heart of, of, of these stories. Because they have apparently read the Bible and it does show God as a nearly incompetent, tyrannical dickhead. Just because you won't say it doesn't mean I won't. I get the feeling you read the Bible with some pretty narrow blinders, guys. Skipping entire books and chapters in the Bible in the process. So the next clip is we're gonna show you an allusion to 
a plan that um, he has with his mother. Yes, they bring in mom into this season as well. They call her the divine goddess. So here we go again, mixing elements that are not Christianity into Christianity, uh, or at least a show that is supposed to have a basis in Christianity, according to the producers. So he, I just want you to hear like part of their plan in regards to God. What's he doing here, Lucifer? I don't know. You married him. What kind of ruins our plans to storm the gates of heaven and destroy him? Well, I'm thinking we might not need to do that anymore. Okay. She finishes her sentence by saying I will never forgive him. A lot of skipping around. This is from later in the episode, by the way. So the plan at this point is to use the flaming sword to beat down the gates of heaven and to let Lucifer's mom go at it with God hopefully destroying him in the process. Lucifer sees this as an opportunity for them to reconcile without violence, a point these guys seem to completely ignore, as we will see. But the plan, storm the gates of heaven and... Destroy God? Destroy God. Wow. And she's married. She was married to God. Yeah, she was supposed to be married to him. She oh. somehow got wow. cast from heaven or banished or something, and her soul wound up in hell and got freed. And it's very so on a, strange. On a deep spiritual level, mm -hmm. a woman is a church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It's supposed to be married to God. Mm -hmm. Literally behind his back is courting and in love with Lucifer. I mean, this is literally like hitting at the core of, of, of Christianity has, has had a struggle. I mean, that's why Revelation talks about a woman riding a beast. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is very like prophetic even how they're putting yeah. this out there. The heart yeah. of the church. The heart yeah. of the church playing a harlot with the, with the man of sin. So this next clip, we're going to see um, another exchange and dialogue that happens between him and God Johnson. And they've been captured by a crazy nurse. She manages to capture them, pump them full of drugs. They're here captured on, in a, like an old hospital or insane asylum or something like that. Okay, so I am scripting this as I rewatch the video. Um, and I'd forgotten that this guy thought that Lucifer's mom was courting and was in love with Lucifer. That's not at all what happens in the series ever, which is another indication they haven't watched the show, but they act like they know shit about it. What the hell, guys? I mean, come on. They were in a mental institution, dude. See what happens when you don't watch the show and just pull shit out of your ass? Well, I had no idea you were so angry with me. Really? Because I've been pretty upfront about it. But to want to destroy me? That's pretty serious. You mind telling me why? Because... Because I'm your son. And... You rejected me. Oh. Well then, I guess I can't say as I blame you. The fact of the matter is, I don't even remember why I was ever so angry with you to begin with. For what it's worth, I am sorry. I truly am. And I am proud of you, Samuel. I'm proud of the man you've become. So this is an important point in Lucifer's journey. He wants what any child wants, the approval of his parents. He wants to know that they are proud of him. He feels that he was wronged by his father and at the very least wants to get his attention, if not forgiveness and recognition for who he has become and what he's doing with Chloe. And it looks like that is what he's getting, which makes his day. But how did our panel of ignorant idiots take it? I'm still having a hard time finding the little nugget of goodness inside of this Well, because it's a story. father forgiving his son. Yeah. Exactly, which is what the story is about. Redemption. Your buddies can pick that out, but apparently don't understand the broader message that Christians gravitate towards. I mean, sure, y'all bring up one side of the non-canonical story, but fail to see it from the other side. I mean, God regretted making humans before he genocided everything in a global flood and didn't know how many good people were in Sodom and Gomorrah and made a bet with Satan over Job. So is it really a stretch to say he fucked up with Lucifer when he booted him? We see Lucifer's perspective here in the series. How he feels he was slighted, justified or not. This was a conversation he needed to have with his father to reconcile their differences in a healthy way without violence 
And y'all completely missed that point. This is a redemption story, and at this point we can already see a shift in Lucifer's character, which y'all have not even touched. This is one, yeah, moment. one episode. Okay. This is the father who's supposed to be God. Mm -hmm. and Doesn't know. He's the one that mean. needs to say he's sorry. Yeah. And that literally he's proud of who he's become. Wow. I, I think this just saddens the heart of God. He is very brokenhearted that Lucifer did what he did and in his defiance would be willing to kill God when God didn't deserve any of that. Wow, this is just yeah. a total reversal. They're adding a lot to the character of mm -hmm. Satan and stripping away a lot from God. I still can't believe I gave all my money away. Well, if it's any consolation, you haven't exactly been yourself of late. Yeah. Listen, I wanted to ask you, what's the last thing you remember? I was in New Mexico for work. I was walking through this Navajo gift shop. I saw this cool belt buckle, so I picked it up, and next thing I knew, I woke up strapped to a gurney next to you. Lucky you. <laughs> Hey, they, uh, they said we was arguing. If I did or said something to upset you, I apologize. No. No, you were quite lovely, actually. For a brief moment, I thought you were my father. Huh? A man for whom I harbor a great deal of resentment. And you said some things that I think I wish he'd always said to me. So, for that, I thank you. Well, I guess even a blind squirrel catches a nut every now and then. You take care of yourself. Does this mean you're not angry at your dad anymore? No, I'm not angry. I'm bloody furious. So I realized that my father would never say those things to me. And for that, I hate him all the more. The season revolves around Lucifer's mother and the flaming sword, yeah, but the reason that God Johnson was acting with some of the knowledge of God was because of him wearing what appeared to be a belt buckle. It turned out to be a part of the flaming sword, specifically its hilt, and once it was removed, the guy didn't remember a thing from when he put it on to when it was removed. This is an important part of the development of Lucifer as a character, since a conversation he had with God Johnson was rendered essentially meaningless since it wasn't really God telling him anything said in that exchange. It sets him back considerably, because he's back to thinking that his father would never say what God Johnson did, which makes him angrier. So what does the peanut gallery think? But in the end, you know, he had, he had said some things, and then Lucifer is hoping those things would be true. And then what does he say, you know, when he finds out that they're not? I hate God all the more. I hate God all the more. So this is the message that they're sending about God. He's, he's not redemptive. Yeah. It's a show about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. God's not forgiving, and therefore he should be hated all the more because of it. Because wow. he's not, not forgiving Lucifer. Wow. So it's a strong message. So they completely missed the point. Regardless of whether or not they believe that the angels are children of God throughout this series, we see angels, Lucifer and Amenadiel mainly, refer to him as father. So, within the context of the show, Lucifer is framed as a son looking for his father's approval. And though he could be said to be lashing out at the beginning by refusing orders to return to his duties as the Lord of Hell, the conversation he had with God Johnson begins a healing process that he needs. Remember that this is a redemption story and that the message most Christians take from this is that if even the devil can be redeemed and forgiven, then no one is beyond reach. They seem offended that, peti that people were petitioning for a season six and go on for the rest of the video about how Christians shouldn't like the show and how it paints God in a bad light and all that. They continue on demonizing pretty much all media as being a tool for Satan, it's, it's, it's absolute nonsense. Quoting scripture throughout it, you know, that literally means nothing to me at all, so I'm not going to cover that. Literally, the rest of this video is proselytizing and whining about creative errors and billboards. So let's talk about how the character of Lucifer developed through the series instead. We already saw what he was like at the pilot, so let's go to the end of season one. A meta deal, having found out Lucifer is mortal, resurrects a corrupt cop to kill Lucifer. A meta deal leaves out a couple of key points of information, though, when he does this. See, angels don't have the power to move souls from hell to heaven or vice versa. 
a bit of information Lucifer was able to use. Sure, the cop was pulled out of hell, back to his body, but that doesn't matter. He still goes back when he dies. The cop is merely delaying the inevitable, but Lucifer calls to his father to help him when he is injured and dying. From what he says in this instance, it would be incredibly surprising if any Christian doesn't see the message. But if you're up there, Dad, I need a favor. I'll be the son that you always wanted me to be. I'll do as you ask. Go where you want me to. In exchange, all I ask is so that you protect Chloe. That can't be right. for this. I know a guy. Apparently he wants me back here. Sorry, pal. One year sadly. I mean... He gives himself over to his father, telling him he'll do whatever his father wants. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a particularly, literally bloody altar call for all intents and purposes. And God answers, leaving him in hell long enough to see that one of the souls has escaped and then bringing him back to save Chloe and track down the errant soul. He has evolved as a character. Where he once was just a party animal without any real attachments, he has changed and cares about Chloe even rejecting her advances at one point while she is wasted. Hell, he cares about her whole family, including her ex, though he gives him shit almost constantly, a point that comes up in later uh, in the more recent season. Despite being the Prince of Darkness, these guys are taking the wrong message from the show. Lucifer is supposed to be irredeemable, but through the series we see him change into a better person. Like I said to them, the point of the series that Christians resonate with is that if the devil himself can be redeemed, anyone can. I'm an atheist, and I can see why this show is a favorite among Christians. What's wrong with these guys?